and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. And this episode is a request from one of our patrons, Gonzalo Valdez, would like us to do 1980s Inferno. This one was written and directed by the master himself, Dario Argento. And it shows a lot. <laughs> the first note I made about this movie was Super Argento. <laughs> yeah. Lee McCloskey is in this, and he was... Mostly an actor for TV, soap, opera. soap operas <laughs> more notably. Irene Miracle is in this and she was in Midnight Express and Puppet Master. A lot of familiar faces are in this from a lot of like Italian horror movies and like Argento, yeah. you know, movies too. Exactly. Movie starts off with one of our main characters, Rose, reading a book called The Three Mothers. And it tells the story of three evil sisters who rule the world through sorrow, tears, and darkness. And they rule the world from three different houses, which are in different places in the world. These houses are built by this architect, and it's this architect who has actually written this book. Rose kind of believes what she's reading in this book. She believes it to be true, and she actually thinks that she's living in one of the houses that was built for one of these sisters. Walking back to her apartment, and she's thinking about these keys that are mentioned in the book. One of the keys is in the cellar, and she's looking in the cellar, and she makes a connection like the cellar, and she sees like a grate underneath. She actually goes underneath. Yeah, it's all easy, yeah, easy too. Easy. She just lifts it up. It's, at this point, it's very dreamy. You're not even sure if it's real or if she's dreaming all this. And Well, she drops her brooch in this water. Well, she's got to go and try to retrieve it, right? Super deep. It's like <laughs> almost a whole other world underneath here. This woman could hold her breath Super for long. a really long time. <laughs> Corpse kind of floats in her and she freaks out and goes back up the ladder, right? She writes a letter to her brother who lives in Rome. Doesn't even have a chance to read it because he's too mesmerized by this woman he's seeing. Again, you're not even sure if she's really there or if he's imagining it because it's so dreamy. His friend ends up actually opening the letter and reading it. And in the letter, it just basically says what she saw and what she suspects. And she thinks she's living in this house of this evil sister. Decides to take it upon herself to go actually take out the book. She goes right at closing. Like, what a... You don't do that. Yeah. You don't go right at close. <laughs> exactly. It's a word. One way to piss the guy yeah. off, too. Please exit through here. And she goes to go through what you assume would be an exit, but this exit actually leads to these weird passageways and stumbles upon some weird witch type person with yeah. these cauldrons <laughs> yeah. and everything like all these weird vials yeah. that are boiling and these witch hands with these long fingers which will look familiar if you've seen another Argento movie <laughs> yeah. goes to grab the book away from her she gets in the cab again which looks like another Argento Arge yeah. movie in That's the right. cab Esa strasa. <laughs> Esa strasa. So Sarah gets back to her apartment building. She's freaked out. She meets this guy. I'll yeah. stay with you. It's okay. <laughs> I'll I'll keep you company. Of course, he'll just yeah, sure. He's he good comes. timing. <laughs> if someone turned to me in an elevator and said, "I'm scared," I'd be like, "I don't okay, give it. Be <laughs> fucking scared. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm sure you're on something now." They go back to her apartment, and he's just keeping her company. They put on some, like, this opera music, calm down and relax a little bit. Opera music is so calm. <laughs> <laughs> the lights start to dim down, and the power starts to go out, so the song starts to cut in and out. He kind of goes to the fuse box. I fixed it. He just comes out of the darkness with a knife through his neck. <laughs> Mark ends up finding Sarah dead in her apartment. And he ends up actually finding remnants of the letter that his sister sent him, but he didn't get a chance to read before. And he ends up going to New York to find his sister. In the meantime, his sister is in her apartment, seeing all these like weird silhouettes through a door, and she starts to get into all these weird passageways, and all of a sudden you see these hands, these yeah. witch hands with these nails, grab her face, puts her head right into these nails, and you see the hand grab the top of a window pane, jams down into her neck. Yeah. Mark 
now has gotten to New York. He's gotten into his sister's apartment. He ends up finding a void space underneath the floor. Yeah. And that's where we're going to end it. Because there's a lot more that happens. There's a lot more people that he, Mark yeah. ends up yeah. running into. And a lot more weird situations. So this movie is kind of the forgotten sequel to Suspiria. And a lot of people may not even know that, you know, Suspiria has a sequel. And that's big shoes to fill. It broke through, right? It was big in not just in its home country, but it was big in North America. And it, it basically blew the doors open mm -hmm. for Italian horror. And now he is here trying to do a sequel to one of his best known movies. And man, that's got to be tough. You can only really go down. <laughs> <laughs> from Suspiria, yeah. really. I mean, and but this this movie doesn't go down. Yeah, it stays along the same lines. It's just that it's different. Maybe if this movie does get some bad reviews, it's probably because it's not Suspiria. Exactly, right? and you can tell. You can tell that Argento is trying to be different from yeah. Suspiria. Like Suspiria starts off super strong, lots of gore and deaths right in the beginning of the movie. In this movie, you're like, where's all the Argento gore fest, bright red, bloody mm. deaths? They're not there until probably halfway or past halfway through the movie, you start to see that. So you can tell he's like, okay, I don't want to be a cookie cutter movie maker, right? I don't want to just do Suspiria again. That's exactly what people would accuse him of doing. Yeah. Oh, this is just Suspiria yeah. again. So either way, he's kind of fucked. Yeah, exactly. And the movie does do a great job of sort of starting to flesh out this world with yeah. these three mothers, right? Exactly. These three yeah. sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't just have another Suspiria and just have killing. You need to have start to have story underlining it. You don't really put it all together until about halfway through the movie that, oh, this is a sequel or in the same world as Suspiria. Then you get a bit more backstory to Suspiria. And then you get teased a little bit for the next movie too, right? With the next sister. The music is, was done by Keith Emerson and it's Quite a haunting score, actually. The pacing of this movie is very odd, I found. Like, it's very Italian. The first half of the movie is just people wandering around. <laughs> yeah. These beautifully lit spaces, these weird spaces, kind of just... Yeah. Looking around. Halfway through the movie, it, it picks up. There's dialogue, and you get, okay, now things are moving. He does a good job of sort of immersing you into the, the world, right? The kills are great. Oh, yeah. They don't start off right off the bat. Then they start happening quickly after, right? Bookstore guy. Yeah. He's drowning all those kittens. And then he gets eaten alive by a bunch of rats. Yeah, no, help, help. Yeah. They're eating me alive. Yeah. Help. Somebody does come to, I guess, help yeah. him. And they just kill him. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a woman that gets eaten alive by a bunch of cats. Cats, yeah. Cats getting, like, thrown at her, yeah. right? All this mayhem and suspense and everything. It's like that the witch is commanding all these animals. Architect yeah, that's gets right. hung by his, his own voice box. <laughs> yeah, and just his wheelchair tips over and it's yeah. just enough. Just enough. That his neck hangs. In this movie too, there's also a sense of urgency about three quarters of the way through because a fire starts in this building there's a sense of urgency and the pacing really starts to pick up because mark finds that void space a fire that's yeah. going on right and in the it's meantime like, that he's not aware of yeah the movie's called inferno uh, for, for a reason. Reason. <laughs> yeah. typical or gentle like he picks his settings very well everything is huge Everything looks so big in this movie, mm -hmm. right? Took it to an epic level, right? Yeah. And it's it's an epic sequel. So if you did not know that there was actually a sequel to Suspiria, and you want to check it out, well, definitely check out Inferno, and also check out the movie that came after it. The Mother of Tears. So in the meantime, keep drinking.